let me see if I can share my screen. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the latest progress we're making, also the direction Microsoft is driving towards uh, more integrative AI. Uh, I'm using Microsoft PowerPoint, translating my Scottish English into Chinese. Hopefully this is going to work. You guys can read the, the Chinese subtitle as I'm speaking. So before I start, I want to just self-introduce myself. I really am so grateful to four beautiful universities from Hunan to Tsinghua to Scotland and to Carnegie Mellon. So I spent half of my life in those universities and growing up. Then I spent the other half and the Microsoft. So this is a brief journey of uh, what I've been doing. Um, so more or less, it was related to speech technology and AI. Now I oversee Microsoft's um, Azure AI engineering research that got the, that is the platform for Microsoft, not only in speech, but also language, computer vision and the business decision including the latest um, OpenAI partnership. So the OpenAI Azure services is part of the cognitive services we are shipping together with um, speech, language, vision, and the decision. So that's a brief introduction of uh, my journey. So I want to start with this. The era of foundation models is here. And whether you like it or not, this is the, the biggest, one of the biggest trend. It's a foundation model that can centralize a lot of information from all the data from various modalities. So Stanford published this um, foundation model paper. It's actually pretty illustrative. That's absolutely aligned with what we have been working on. They published this in 2021. So you can see the picture on the right is a bunch of data, whether it's text, image, speech, structured data, 3D signals. You train to create this foundation model that will form the basis. Then you can adapt to different tasks, such as question answering, information extraction, image captioning, and uh, computer vision. So, Microsoft has been driving this in practice, in production, since 2015, when we launched Azure Cognitive Services. At that time, it was codenamed Project Oxford. And speech, language, and the vision were the three major pillars. In addition to those foundation models, we also offered um, customization. So moving forward, I think the two biggest bets we vision is really how can we create a more integrative foundation model? That is, right now, Microsoft got a speech foundation model just for speech. Um, a computer vision foundation model we created codenamed Florence that is getting into production. I will actually really spend a, a large amount of time talk about that. Um, so, and more joint optimization across different modality together with adaptation with external knowledge. Those will be two unfinished major milestones in front of us. Okay. So this graph illustrated our product that is in production supporting customers worldwide. Um, we got a vision services, speech services, language services, decision services, together with OpenAI, GPT-3, DALI-2, they will be coming into cognitive services. We believe that the intersection of X, that is text, representing language, Y, that is sensory, representing either audio or video, and the Z, multilingual, the intersection of that is going to be where the intelligence would differentiate us from the rest of the animals. <clears throat> then there's a big circle outside of that X, Y, Z. We believe that is the knowledge fusion. 
we need to bring symbolic computing and the connectionist computing seamlessly to make that intersection absolutely more intelligent. So that is the vision and the high-level summary of our aspiration to drive Azure AI to the next level. Let me do a demo to illustrate our progress here. So there are a lot of autonomous driving, including Yaqing, working on this uh, Apollo with Baidu, right? So I want to really challenge all of us. If you put your vehicle in safari in Africa, what will happen? All right, let's see. If you put a safari video, feed that into Microsoft Azure Cognitive Services, right now it's in private preview, what will happen? So this is the video. Okay, you see, it's a beautiful scenery. You have all kinds of animals, and you have tourists hiding in the vehicle, trying to see what is going on, whether you will be attracted, right? And uh, this is the video. All right, I'm now feeding the video into Azure AI. Let's see what happens. You can see Azure AI can identify every object, major movement, and they interpret that with language that makes sense. A man is driving a car with the wood in front of them, with an animal, rhino, walking. So this is in private preview today. As, isn't that amazing progress? But I don't want to stop here. I want to highlight, you can feed this into our text summarization API. That is also in private preview. You can, bring, you can then get an identical, you know, voice like me. By the way, the person XD in the corner is not real me. It's all synthesized. It's the digital copy of me. The voice is also spoken by Azure Cognitive Services for Speech, Neural TTS. So imagine the scenario. You can feed any video, identify what is going on, and then you send those results into text summarization, identify the keyframe. Then this anchor person called XD digital copy will tell the story for you as the anchor person completely driven by AI. Let's see what happens. This scene takes place in the Kruger National Park where a rhino is walking down a dirt road next to a safari truck. In this scene, a rhino is walking down a dirt road next to a vehicle. The man in the safari vehicle is driving next to the rhino. So that is the demo I want to highlight with Azure Cognitive Services API. You can use the foundation model of computer vision to get the interpretation of every object in the video. Then text summarization will identify multiple frames, identify the keyframes. Then you can feed the story to the digital XD and the, the neural voice will be speaking with the same accent, dialect, whatever tones I have. With my approval, of course, we respect the responsible AI. So to avoid abuse of my voice, um, this is the story. All powered by Cognitive Services APIs in production or private preview today. So now with the remaining time, I want just to just illustrate some of the key components in Cognitive Services explain to you what is we are trying to achieve and uh, you, you can you know stop and raise questions if needed okay so i don't want to make this one way so as i said you know the foundation model has been in production 
in cognitive services since 2017. Uh, we just didn't publish it. We didn't call this speech foundation model. When we launched this in production in 2017, Microsoft had uh, you know multiple silos. Um, we got the one model for office dictation, trained with a lot of data collected for office dictation. We got another model for Cortana speaker. It's designed for far field. And we have another model for telephony speech. As you can see on this chart on the right, and uh, that was, uh, you know, all siloed models. But we actually made the, um, a strategic decision. We want to create a unified speech model. And nobody believed in us at that time. You could actually have done this because telephony speech, far field, Cortana speaker, and the office dictation, they are very different. To our surprise, with a unified model, we could not only simplify engineering, but also raise the bar, improve the performance across the board. That demonstrates the power of transfer learning by integrating very diverse data together with a larger model, and we put that into production. That was one of the reasons why we actually offered the amazing quality. Another lesson I want to share with you was, you know, back in 20, uh, back in 1992, I was a junior faculty member at the CMU, and uh, I wrote the National Science Foundation proposal. I wanted to unify language model and the acoustic model in the spoken language system. That is the architecture of the system. 30 years passed quickly. We not only unified that, we could get rid of the whole thing. And I'm going to show you a demo. We not only reach the point using um, one big neural net, we can replace everything else. We could even include some of the downstream tasks, such as summarization and translation. With one transformer, we could actually perform not only speech recognition, but also translation at the same time. This is a phenomenal progress in the last 30 years. So how is Microsoft Azure Cognitive Services doing? We do have challenges. Stanford AI Index published this in 2021 on the unsolved challenges in speech recognition. They use all the production systems available at that time, from Apple to IBM to Google to Amazon to Microsoft. So they basically interviewed uh, a lot of people with uh, African-American accent from North Carolina. They have a strong accent. Even the language, the, um, the variants, the use of words are different from the typical white speakers. And to everyone's surprise, everyone, whether it's Apple or IBM or Google or Microsoft, there's a substantial gap between black speakers and white speakers. So that uh, raised a lot of concern on the racial disparity in the US. As you can see from this third party study, Microsoft Azure Cognitive Services um, had the lowest error rate. This is the error rate, the lower the better. And we had the, the smallest gap in comparison to all the production services out there, but the, still we do have a gap. Um, that was 2021. I'm happy to report today, if you measure the black speakers from Stanford AI Index with Azure Cognitive Services production today, the error rate is here. So we dramatically reduced the gap between African-American speakers and the white speaker. Of course, the white speaker error rate is also lower. There's their gap. But I want to just actually uh, share with you, uh, this is uh, just amazing progress for Microsoft to commit to the diversity and inclusion and uh, to really drive forward with amazing quality that's unmatched by the industry. Now, by the way, and whether 
you know, the speech quality or translation quality is good or not, you can judge from the PowerPoint translation. I'm translating my Chinese Scottish accent. I, I'm sorry, I just, I, I learned my English from China and then went to Scotland, got my education. I have a very unique accent. And this has been translated in real time, in production, free for any PowerPoint customer like you and me. So the second thing I want to talk about is the neural text-to-speech. I'm happy to share with you BBC Radio is actually uh, using this technology to improve productivity. I want to share with you some of the examples of their human anchor person versus Azure powered AI person. Of course, you cannot tell the difference. And uh, most people probably even don't know Azure AI is helping organizations like BBC. So here's the human example. You, you can, can ask, ask me for, for BBC, BBC radio, radio stations, stations and pod. I'm sorry, I, I just moved too fast. Here's the text to speech, part by Azure AI. The, the people, people with, with hidden, hidden immunity against COVID-19. Okay. While the latest research so suggests you that can hear, you can against so listen to BBC radio lost in just three months. A new hope I has appeared on the horizon. Whether the it's enigmatic a TSAC. human or AI. So, and the last one on speech I want to share with you, uh, most of the EV companies in China adopted Azure AI in powering their driving experience. This is one of the Yixiang video enabled by Azure Company Services. So that is a, a very brief introduction on speech. Now I want to move to language. That's a, another major pillar in cognitive services. Um, we are, as I said, you know, X, Y, Z code that joined in the section here is the North Star for us. But we're pragmatic for translation, we're focused on Z code. It's of course designed to be multilingual. We support about 140 languages and uh, Z code played a major role. The basic idea of Z code is very straightforward. We're using both multilingual data, like most translation people are using, and uh, monolingual data. That is like uh, used by mask the language model. It stands for mask language model. And we have the joint optimization, multitask training, to optimize both monolingual mask language model objective function and the translation function that is multilingual. So it's the standard the transformer based encoder and decoder, but we introduce monolingual data in addition to the multilingual data. And that's what we call Z code. And we ship the mixture of expert based Z code in production for Azure Cognitive Services translation and document translation. So it's different from what you guys see on Bing or Microsoft Translator, which is, was powered by the last generation. But the document level translation is, you know, with this uh, mixture of expert, massive tra transformer based Z code model that is supported a hundred plus languages. And uh, here's the comparison in with the Z code mixture of expert versus a standard uh, last generation transformer based the translation. Um, the X axis is you know different language pairs. Y is really the percent of improvement. You can see even for high resource languages, we got a lot of data between English and German. We observe the improvement. For some of the low resource language like Korean and English, it's massive, like uh, Bulgarian and English, Bosnian and English, Slovenian and English, and Faris and English. It's just, you know, dramatic, but it's consistent across the board. 
So given the amazing horsepower of Z code, we further extended the Z code to Z code plus plus just to optimize for text-based summarization. So it's a variant of Z code. It's based on transformer and the transducer, but we introduced a bunch of new improvements. On the XSUM Z code open benchmark, it outperformed basically everything, including Google's Pegasus and the BART, T5, etc. So it remains to be the state of the art. We actually we had a Z code plus plus. Now we have new Z code plus plus plus. So that is the high level summary summary of the language pillar. Now I want to come back to the video. With one transformer, we can perform both speech recognition, multiple languages, and the translation multiple languages out. Essentially, you can have multiple languages in, multi language out. This is not yet integrated into the Cognitive Services API yet, but there is a demo to show the capability and the amazing progress in the last 30 years. Hi, I'm Laura. Nice to meet you. In this series, we're going to learn basic German expressions. It's super easy and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to introduce ourselves in German. We'll start speaking right away, but first, it's important to clarify that in German, there is a difference between so this is German the German and the English Chinese translation. Let's first see how German people she can speak multiple languages in an informal situation. Hallo, ich heiße Laura. Schön, dich kennenzulernen. Hi, I'm Laura. Nice to meet you. Hallo, ich heiße Laura. Schön, dich kennenzulernen. Start by saying, hallo, ich heiße, then say your name. Hallo, ich heiße Laura. Finally say, schön, dich kennenzulernen. Hallo, ich heiße Laura. Schön, dich kennenzulernen. I think you got the idea. Now for the remaining time, I want to really spend the, probably like half of the time talk about the amazing progress we're making on computer vision in the last two years to create the foundation model Florence. And so you can find the paper of Florence. It's a new foundation model for computer vision we published last year. Um, I want to just, you know, highlight some of the capability and progress we're making. This is already in private preview of cognitive services for vision. Um, we're in the process to release the API to the public. So before I start, I want to make this a little more interactive. And of course, a picture is worth a thousand words, but it depends on the interpretation. So if you see this lady, um, the dress, what color is it? Too bad that there's no interactive. Can anyone just vote on the, on the application here? Can you hear me? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so it depends on the person, half of the population it's, it's, thought it's this wrong. is a, <laughs> yeah, I know. So we actually asked Florence, and this is the output of Florence. It's blue and a white dress with gold stripes and the jacket that says the color of the, the, the dress. So the reason I want to actually use that photo is really to highlight the complexity of computer vision. We made a tremendous progress in speech and language and using transformer and because the ambiguity is less challenging. If you look at the diverse computer vision task, you have image classification, you have image retrieval, you have object detection, you have image segmentation, so they are expect, you know, very challenging, very controversial, very different. And of course you have video classification, you have post recognition, activity recognition, et cetera, et cetera. So very diverse, far more diverse than speech and language. So <clears throat> what do we do before Florence? It's very expensive. If you want to do the, you know, um, the task, you basically collect a lot of data you build a classification model, 
and you do the tagging services. You have another task, you just you know, do this all vertically. You know, this each of them is very expensive. But what is more challenging is once you have this API for our customers, that's what we Microsoft did. Also, Google, Amazon, they did something similar. But in China, probably Baidu and uh, Ali, they had a similar solution. They are very fragile. If you use the API, let's optimize for object detection. You do something slightly different. The robustness of AI quality just drops like crazy, falls off. So we turn this by 90 degree. With the foundation model, in the last two years, we created Florence. We created a horizontal pre-trained model. We use not only image encoder of the transformer, we added the text. So we introduced the semantics into the computer vision. That's the major disruption. Then we created an adapt, adaptive model. Then we can actually support all those tasks in the form of API. So we use the mass amount of training data close to 900 million. And uh, we use the good transformer code swing and uh, of course, massive GPU. So as a result of that, we adopted uh, you know, the latest technology like uh, swing transformer invented by Microsoft Research Asia friends and uh, we have the unified contrast learning in the image text label space and we improved this um, cross entropy supercon and the clip align so this all described in the paper unified contrast learning in image text label space um, in the open AI case they only have the, the data paired with the image. But we extracted the semantically similar one. So similar images can be actually shared across with the same label. As a result of this massive improvement, you can see Florence substantially outperformed OpenAI's clip model on the basic benchmark. But it's just not outperforming open AI on 44 research benchmarks with one unified foundation model we achieved the state of thought AI quality which is the video vision video in the language object detection look at this you know the baseline is the 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 state of thought the best published number Okay, every role is different research benchmark. And the uh, information retrieval, image retrieval, of course, image classification. The only thing we didn't actually beat the state of the art is image net. I think uh, personally, image net is just uh, not a super well defined task. That's challenging because the fixed vocabulary of the image classes, but the, the, the gap is fairly small. On the other 40 plus vision tasks for the first time with one unified foundation model Florence, we brought renaissance back to computer vision, achieved new state of the art quality. Uh, so, actually, just a quick question. And this, this is, yeah, this is uh, fascinating. And I actually read the, some of the work, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, with a huge uh, amount of uh, interest uh, and, and obviously, you know, with uh, uh, the transformer, you know, you're able to uh, do the you know, representation and alignment uh, and a fusion of different modality quite well, right? Which is always a huge uh, uh, challenge. I mean, to the more uh, trying to align different multi model. You know, we, we actually have that issue with uh, with cars with Thomas driving. Uh, so the question is, uh, you know, with the uh, vision transformers and a swing transformer. Uh, well, will this render all the earlier deep learning algorithms right, like convolutional neural net irrelevant? Uh, you know, this actually, you know, get to a, a converged foundation model for all different modalities. 
uh, in, you know, anyway, <clears throat> I know it's yeah, probably um, controversial, that's, but yeah. That's, that's, that's not, it, it is controversial. Facebook, uh, like Yan Lokun right. and the right. team, yes. they were trying to demonstrate convolutional neural nets still work. Yes, they are comparable. But the, when the model size is getting bigger, the power of transformer is actually more uh, um, stunning. So when the yeah, but it's also easier to align different modality. That's what I mean, right? In a semantic yeah, level. That's right. Uh, um, and, and especially if you use it, you know, end-to-end -end, uh, encoder decoder, uh, you know, gener generative model that that is uh, yes. much easier to do. Yes. That the, so to us, we we would uh, abandon convolutional neural nets or transformer in Microsoft Azure Cognitive Services. That's just one data point. I'm not preventing anyone from using convolutional neural nets, right? It's okay, but uh, they are just a tremendous advantage. Okay, thank you. Um, let me actually share with you some of the uh, capabilities with Florence on the open world recognition. Um, our vocabulary size is 400,000 versus 22,000 in ImageNet. On that task, we didn't actually achieve the state of the art. It's slightly worse, but I want to actually tell you we redefined the open vocabulary is the key. Uh, look at this capability we have here. Slow Kwame Rich, no problem for us to recognize. And the brand of the, the can. Okay, this is the Song Dynasty painting, famous one. No problem to recognize. And, uh, and let me actually share with you some of the capability on the image captioning. You know, the previous model wasn't wrong, a close up of a pipe. <laughs> you can define the thread as a pipe. <laughs> but Florence gave you the, the amazing new capability. It's a sewing machine with a needle and a thread. And by the way, the previous model actually that was the one we achieved the image captioning human parity. Of course, something was imperfect, right? But you can see the dramatic improvement with Flores. Another example, the previous model from Azure Cognitive Services was a person wearing headphones and playing a music instrument. Nothing wrong. But the new one, to my surprise, is added this one. Isn't that impressive? Of course, it's more specific in comparison to a person. So we did uh, a lot of study. It's amazing this is semantic capability got inserted into computer vision. For example, if you search it, Microsoft, we can bring photos with Windows, etc. back. You search game without the age restriction, you can see game 14. Those are the task that was impossible in the past for computer vision colleagues. We did another fan interesting story. That is, you know, we just uh, um, take the picture of the Economist magazine and use Florence to extract all the information, then combine that with GPT-3 to write a story. Here's the result. Spend a minute to read this one. This was on the cover story of the Economist, Economist magazine, talking about the power of Florence combined with OpenAI GPT-3. It's a completely exciting because that ability to tell the story, inter interpret the cover page of the magazine is just simply stunning. Now I want to do um, another demo, it's a quick demo. So as you know, if you want to do semantic search on Google, Baidu, and Bing, they use a lot of user clicks. So the result is pretty good. But if you want to do enterprise-based image search, you have no other signal. It's much harder. With Florence now, we have that capability. So you can search like uh, for smiling, children on your own personal photo. Actually, you got all those stunning, smiling kids without any signal. This is just your personal photo on OneDrive. A man wearing a turban. 
Look at this. There's no caption or anything. It's your personal photo. We got them very, very accurately extracted. You search, you search for Microsoft, you got all those logo with Microsoft background identified. It's a personal photo open. Keep that in mind. People using public transportation. Look at this result. Train, bus, I'm waiting in the train station. That is the semantic capability I'm talking about. Ships and the sea, look at this one. It's from personal photo, not from the surrounding caption or clicks, etc. Okay? So that flawless capability is just simply game changing. Um, as the Yaqing raised that question, we can easily use the encoder decoder transformer, change the decoder to decode the text based on Florence. So they like the translation system. You have the encoder, decoder. In encoder is the image encoder. Decoder is the text decoder. OK, here's the architecture of Florence's generative image to text transformer. So you can get image captioning, visual question answering, video captioning, etc. cetera, through the text decoder. We just added the decoder from Florence. Look at the amazing result. Florence result on the text caps, a bottle of this uh, beer next to a glass of beer. And we even identified the time of the radio and the brand. What is stunning is the baseball player with Blue Jay is not visible. Without a semantic capability, that's a mission impossible. The more exciting result. Look at this one. The text is <laughs> a menu for a house favorite barbecue on a table. That's the interpretation. Look at this one on the first one. A black Olympus device with a green screen and a white text. Those are the photos taken by the blind people. We can help blind people. You can actually install Scene AI. That's a free app on iPhone. You can point to anything, then our oh, AI powered by cognitive services. We just tell what it is going on in neural text to speech, helping blind people. So you might ask, this is Tsinghua University, right? Um, what is the quality? you know, of Florence on the text generation part. So we did a COCA comparison to Google. Better on the text caps, the first human parity. On the DeepMind Flamingo, unmatched quality. So that is the power of Florence. Not only achieving four disorders, when you are take the encoder, add a text generation on the image Q&A, image captioning, or other tasks, we got a surprising, stunning result in comparison to DeepMind Flamingo, human or human, or Google's Coca. Okay, now. I have, I know Yachin gave me 40 minutes. I'm probably a little bit over. <laughs> Let me just try to wrap this up. Uh, the future of AI, what is, I think. No, no worry, that's okay. Be take, take your time. Yeah, have plenty yeah. of time. Thank you. Um, there was a great neuroscience research that concluded why humans are more intelligent than animals. The major conclusion is we store. You know, we use the neuron, the same set of neurons for different modality. So we are able to connect dots more effectively, our memory. Animals got actually what they call pattern separation. So 
Animals use different sets of neurons to store different modality, different you know, sensory. That's amazing um, conclusion from a British neuroscience research. Humans got the no pattern separation. You have to connect dots to be smart. Animals just do not have that capability. That's one of the reasons why they do not possess language. That only humans got that capability because of the, you know, the joint storage. That is the reason why we're pushing hard on the integrative AI. The joint optimization of a different modality, whether it's a speech, video, language. Multilingual is the business reason because we are a global company. Right now, we support roughly 140 languages on the XYZ code uh, journey, but that's still not enough. There are you know more languages we need to support. So we are we started pursuing this um, integrative AI since I became the Azure AI CTO. We set this as the North Star for the, for the team. We have made a tremendous progress. In particular, we made a tremendous progress on the Z code for both translation and the summarization. We achieved the amazing state of the art quality. And most importantly, the, the cost of inference is also efficient. We believe that we need to add external attention to infuse the knowledge into the self uh, attention. That external knowledge is lacking in the current deep learning transformer. So joint optimization and uh, external knowledge are the two major priorities for us in order to achieve the next level of quality on the platform. So we simplified XYZ code. It's a little bit long to I code. That stands for integrative code. And we had uh, you know, a paper summarizing our I code journey, achieving amazing progress in speech, video, and uh, text tasks. Essentially, we have the multimodal fusion. So we have the language vision and the speech three separate encoder with cross attention and fusion for tasks that uh, especially in the metaverse you need to really deal with all of them jointly such as content moderation we're also partnering with uh, dolly 2 on the generation side with florence because our capability is so much better than clip we believe that we can actually make the understanding the synthesis much stronger. Right now, Dolly 2 really have challenge to synthesize people faces in with the precision and the quality we need. But what's more important is really for the bigger question is not just the platform capability of AI. I want to actually challenge the com community um, we reach the point of creating the next GUI moment. What I meant was when Xerox Park created a graphics user interface, that was a leap forward over the IBM PC DOS command interface. So Xerox Park used the graphics card, mouse, and the APIs available create that the GUI interface, the value and the paradigm shift with Apple and uh, Microsoft taking advantage of that paradigm shift, change the whole industry completely. Now with the uh, foundation model and uh, you know, the industry, whether it's Google, Microsoft, Baidu, Alibaba, in China and uh, they, the API for AI, whether it's language, computer vision, speech, they are readily to be consumed by you and me. But we have not synthesized connected dots to create the next GUI moment. 
you have autonomous driving as one of the biggest workloads for computer vision. We have um, you know smart speakers, Q and A, or closed captioning like PowerPoint. What you see for live translation, those are valuable, high value scenarios. But I don't think any of them have got the level of GUI impact to change the industry. But those APIs are ready. So I want to really just challenge the community, especially for AI researchers and the Tsinghua University. What is it that you can do to connect dots without reinventing the wheel? Just use an API. You can create the next GUI moment. I think that is probably the biggest opportunity for integrative AI. And we are, and Microsoft, we are going to push the quality of API as hard as we can because we are a platform company. Our goal is to really help you achieve more, you empower every person and every organization on the planet to do better with AI in the front and the center. So that's the end of my talk. I rushed to finish everything under 40 minutes, I think. Um, thank you very much, Yachin. We probably got.